Welcome to Cookery with Mason Storm. In this episode, we're going to look at making some caramelized apples. This is a very easy recipe to make. There's a lot of ways you can kind of mix it up to get different flavors and tastes out of it. And it doesn't take very long to do. So, let us begin. To start with, decide on the amount of apples you want to use in the recipe. I'm just making it for myself and I've got some small apples, so I'm going to use two of them. Probably should have used just one, but uh, it was delicious. Now from here you can either peel the apples and then cut them or simply just cut the apples which is what I did here. I just sliced them up uh, in quarters first, got the core out of them and then cut them again. Then I, some of them I cut again after that but you need to cut a smallish pieces but it probably doesn't actually matter all that much. You just get different results depending on the size. It just changes your cooking time and kind of your end result as well. Okay, from here we get our skillet, we have our stove on medium-high heat, and we add some butter to it. Give it a little bit of time, let it warm up, let it, the pan warm up, let some of the butter melt, and then we'll move on to the next step. And after giving it a little bit of time, we'll pour all the apples into the skillet, and the fun will begin. Now from here you can either cook the apples down a little bit if you want to or you can add your sugar right away. I typically add mine right away. This time I'm using brown sugar. In high school where I learned the recipe we always used to use white sugar and uh, not entirely sure how big of a taste difference it is. I probably have to make them both at the same time to really be able to tell but I think the kind of some of the thicker properties of the brown sugar worked out really good for this. And I'm sure as well that you could use other sugar types like soft brown sugar or cane sugar and sugar made from different plants or whatever and it would probably mix it up quite a bit. Okay from here I decided to take it to the next level so I decided to add some cinnamon to the mix as well. Apple and cinnamon typically go together very well. I just have some Saigon cinnamon I got at Costco and a couple of sprinkles in. Now I like cinnamon a lot, you probably don't need to put on as much as I did, but it uh, definitely uh, adds a lot to the flavor of it. And then once this starts cooking a little bit longer, it starts to get up to temperature, the smell of it just wafts and just fills the house with this apple cinnamon smell and it's just amazing. As we continue to let the apples cook, the sugar will react more and more until eventually it kind of reaches this kind of bubbling point. Now from here, controlling the temperature or if we can change the way the apples will come out when they're done. For instance, if you want them more crispy on the outside, if you have it a little bit hotter, you can kind of crisp the outside of the apples and then kind of have a more al dente kind of bite in the middle. Whereas if you do it at a bit of a lower temperature, you can kind of have the thing cooked, uh, cooked through in such a way that it's much more tender on the inside and uh, doesn't have as much of a crispiness on the outside. Of course, you could cook it down and then turn up the temperature and then have it cooked through and then, then kind of crisp up the outside. And uh, that might be pretty good. The way that I kind of did it here in this batch was uh, kind of lower on the, the temperature and just kind of cook them through. And uh, I like to have a little bit of bite in my, my cooked apples, so I probably took them off prematurely compared to how some other people would have made them, but I really like how they turned out doing it this way. There's not really a wrong way to make them, unless of course you start a fire, in which case that would be wrong, but as long as you're watching it and you don't, you don't let it kind of get away from you, you should be okay. It's, uh, it's very easy to make and you could say that all the different variations are just uh, the way that you wanted them to be from the beginning. So kind of have a fun recipe to play around with and it's really easy to do and you could do the exact same thing with different uh, different fruit as well you could, you could do it with pears or peaches haven't tried peaches that might be a little bit more tricky but pears are definitely will be easier now you're gonna see me poking the apples with the, the spoon here and that's kind of how I tell when they're ready you can also use like a fork and pierce them with a fork and Kind of feel just how tender they are in the middle and that's that's kind of how you tell how they're ready. 
Once you've decided it's done, take it off the heat, plate, and pour some of the sugary mixture on top and you're all set. I would really like to hear your thoughts on this recipe, so if you make this, tell me what your thoughts of it were in the comments below. Until next time, stay awesome. Oh, and feel free to subscribe.